In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. John is one, and this would be lovely to explore sometime. John spirals uh, when he when he expounds on a, a theme of divinity. And this is one example where he does that. It's like, it's almost like a circle. We end up where we began. So Jesus is saying, first of all, anytime Jesus would say to me, do not let your hearts be troubled, bam, I'd be there. Because if I could learn more how to do that, right? And, and everybody who's hearing Jesus say this it is very receptive to what he's going to say after that. He's setting them up, so to speak. Okay, now the first thing I highlighted has two levels of meaning. You have faith in God, have faith also in me. One is, one is pretty direct and practical. Look, I'm your friend, trust me. You know, that's the first layer. But the second one requires more consideration. And it, it again harkens back to what we talked about at the beginning, which was triggered by Ada's question last week. Jesus is saying, I am so at one with God that you can believe in me the very same way that you can believe in God because we are in one another. And that requires a little bit more consideration before you act on it. And that, that reminds me, the setup of this shouldn't be comfort only because faith, as I keep saying, doesn't happen just between your ears. When, we're, when we go farther down, Jesus is talking about acting. Faith always has a component of doing something about this knowledge of your sharing divine being. Okay, so just a few quick things. I had marked down many dwelling places. Some people use that or interpret that to think there's different like ranks or something, which is, that's not at all what it means. It just means like Carrie's, Robbie Carey's big house, you know, everybody could go there. It's a big house. It's enough for everybody. That's all it means. It's not saying like canonized saints will have bigger rooms and, and uh, those of us that are getting in by our uh, shoelaces are going to have a place closer. You know, we tend to think of it, maybe you even have the picture of um, Dante's image of images of hell and heaven in the divine comedy that some people are closer to God than others. And that's not, it. that's absolutely not what is intended. Um, in fact, there's a, this is an old joke that uh, a cardinal and a taxi driver died at the same time. And the taxi driver went first and the uh, uh, God said, oh, oh, come on in. And that's where you're going to be. And it was a great house. And so the cardinal thought, oh, then I would really have a great house. And he sent him to a kind of a piss poor house and the cardinal said wait a minute you know didn't I didn't I um do what you wanted my whole life and and the Peter's Saint Peter said well when you preached or spoke people slept but when the cab driver drove people prayed <laughs> I think I said that right anyway but the point is to even think in that way that there's better mansions than other places is absolutely not what this is indicating it's just Fullness, fullness, many, many, many. It's like saying a Google. In my father's house, there is a Google of places. There's always room. And what it will be is a community, is a communion of love, not a hierarchy, not that. So Thomas says, well, hey, we don't know where you're going. How can we know the way? And I highlighted in yellow that I am the way. It's me. That's why the first people who followed Jesus were called people of the way they follow the way before they were long before they were called christians and that way went two directions one is because of jesus and if it's like if jesus is the way i'm jumping on that train because i belong to him and the other is the the style in which you live your life the decisions that you make which is what all of jesus life was about Remember I said last week, his passion was the kingdom of God. Well, he's the way to it, literally in him, through him, with him. That's why we say that at mass. In him, through him, and with him, and, and then acting in his stead. Because we can, because we, we belong to the divine being. This is one of the most foundational 
statements that come from the Gospels. This, this could be like a plaque on a wall somewhere or in a church. Maybe it should be in a church somewhere. No one comes to the Father except through me. If you know me, you will also know my Father. The belonging is that type. It's like Siamese twins. You can't separate it. The, in, in their essence, they are together. And we belong to that. The essence of God, Father, Son, and Spirit, is Trinity. And we share that communion. We belong to the communion. That's why church is a communion. That's why you can't walk along the lake and say your rosary and think that, that you're okay in the eyes of God. You're fine in the eyes of God if, unless that's a substitute for coming together through these doors around this altar table in whatever church you happen to go to. Community is, is a non-negotiable here. And then look what Jesus does at the end of that blue section. He uses the very same phrase that he used to use for his enemy enemies when he would say, he would say to his enemies, now you've seen me, you've seen what I do, and you still don't know. In fact, that happened last week, if you remember, in that pericope. Well, now Jesus is using that very same thing to his apostles, because that is how deep their not understanding is. And so they dig themselves further down. And Philip says, okay, just show us, show us, that'll be enough, just show us. And then Jesus, in ex you can almost picture Jesus going, ah, oh. especially Philip, because Philip was, even though he wasn't Peter, James, or John, he had significant roles in the gospel. Um, uh, Jesus called Philip a follower before he called anybody else a follower. Philip brought Nathaniel to Jesus, and when the Greek people wanted to talk to Jesus, they went to Philip to bring him there. So Philip has been in this intermediary position all through the Gospels, and now Philip says to Jesus, okay, just show us, you know, and that'll be enough for us. And then Jesus says, still, Philip, you don't know. Still, you don't know. You know, I don't know if any of you have um, give us this day, but the reflection on the Gospel today is actually perfect for this. The, the guy is um, actually Mars from Boston College. He's, he is um, in the theology department at Boston College, and he does magic tricks for his little kids. And the oldest of the three, still kind of young, I think seven or eight or something like that, said, oh, come on, Dad, show me how, how you did it. And so the father did show him how he took, got the quarter from behind his ear. And the kid was quiet and looked at the father and said, Okay, now really, Dad, how did you do that? That's, that's exactly the setup of what's happening here. G Philip has been with Jesus his whole public life, and then he's talking about this, and, and uh, Philip is saying, okay, but just show us. And it's, it's like the father showing his son the magic trick. He does show him, and the kid goes, no, really, Dad, show me. It's the same thing here. Philip is going, really, Jesus, just show me. And he's saying, I'm it. I'm it. I'm in the Father, the Father's in me. This is where John gets, people like get excited and headaches for this. I'm in the Father, the Father's in me. You're in me, we're in us. Blah, 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 blah. But, but the whole point of that, see, this is what's frustrating. It's hard to put words around communion. You know when you have it. And part of it is, you know when you have it by how you act. Believe me that I am in the Father and the Father is in me or else believe me because of the works themselves. And then this next part, this is the part that complements the beginning of this gospel pericope. Amen, amen, I say to you, whoever believes in me will do the works that I do and will do greater ones than these because I am going to the Father. Now, this is kind of an interesting um, way to end what we're going to hear on uh, Sunday, because Jesus is definitely qualifying the works, isn't he? He said, you'll do what I do, and most people think the miracles will go on, and that's true. Some miracles did continue, but that's not what Jesus is referring to. Then he says, and we'll do greater ones than these because I am going to the Father. Okay, so this is what's happening. The Spirit cannot come to the apostles and the early church and the people gathered to them until Jesus returns to the Father. 
It is in the completion of Jesus returning to his Father that the fullness of the Spirit can descend. It, it's like if you think of a, a circle and then it comes down. The Spirit can't come separate from Jesus returning to the Father. So that's why the last sentence is, because I'm going to the Father. And then um, the, we'll do greater works than these. This is kind of an interesting thing. Scripture scholars have fun with this, I think. Um, because actually, so if you play with it a little bit, could the greater works, the greater ones than these, could those be the sacraments which will follow after Jesus' own works, and that everything Jesus did in his lifetime, which uh, pointed towards the sacraments, will name the sacraments as greater because they will actually mediate salvation to us. So it, it's kind of, a, I'll say that again because that's a little bit dense, but one possibility for this is Jesus, everything Jesus did in word and work in his lifetime pointed toward the divine salvation, which is bringing the kingdom, possibility of bringing the kingdom, which will be mediated by the sacraments, which will exist in the spirit who cannot be given until Jesus returns to the Father. Okay, I'm going to say it again, because th this is really important. Everything Jesus said and did pointed towards the salvation. In other words, the possibility of bringing the kingdom. And that kingdom will be, can be, not solely, but can be mediated by the sacramental life of the church, which will only get started in the spirit who will only be given after, after the last sentence when Jesus goes back to the Father. So what could be saying here, which to me is rather rich, is that the greater things than Jesus did is the sacramental life which mediates how we, how we live um, our Christianity, our being people of the way. 